Slightly more interesting, however, has to do with setting up accounting, or what is essentially or probably better called logging here in the Radius infrastructure. Over here under the tab titled Accounting is one of the couple of locations where you can go about turning on this logging function here on your NPS server. And there's just a couple of things you probably need to know here, the biggest of which is the fact that radius logging or radius accounting can be done either to a flat file, so a file that exists here in Windows System32 log files, or to a SQL Server log. So if you have an existing SQL Server out there, you can point it into that location in order to store them in a SQL Server database somewhere. In order to configure accounting, there's just a very small wizard here that you would configure to define where you wanted to set the, the target location for that data. So to a SQL server, to a text file, to a SQL server and a text file, or to log into a database using the text file logging for failover. So a couple different locations here, ostensibly because these are also designed to be kind of a security or auditing mechanism. So your security policy may require more than one location for the storage of data to protect yourself against a person covering their tracks after they log in inappropriately. Let's connect up here to our text file here on the local computer. Uh, we can identify the logging information that we're interested in logging, as well as the, the log file directory and what happens if logging itself actually fails. In this case, notice the checkbox down here that says, if for some reason you were unable to log, well then go ahead and discard connection requests. This means that if at any point you cannot audit and log the activities of the users coming in, well, the users will then not be able to even connect in through your remote access infrastructure. Depending again on what your security requirements are, this could actually be kind of a challenging checkbox to incorporate because if you can't audit, you can't then accept users. So we'll disconnect this here for now just in case so that we don't end up creating a denial of service if for some reason our logging infrastructure fails. Uh, if I choose the next button here, this is the summary page, and then next again, and then close to go about enabling uh, accounting here on this NPS server. I do also want to show you over here on a remote access server as well, back here in the properties of the server itself, that it's here where we can go about also configuring an accounting provider for the actions going on here on a remote access server itself. So by default, we're not actually doing any accounting at all, but we could use Windows accounting or Radius accounting here in order to support logging the activities going on on a remote access server. Here under Windows accounting, this will actually end up logging that information to a folder here on this machine. Uh, also here under Radius accounting is where we could go about reconfiguring things so that we know we're sending all this information over to our NPS server. So this gives you the ability to then consolidate all of that accounting information here into a single location, probably on a SQL server somewhere, so that you have that audit logged, giving you the abilities to identify what users behaved in what ways. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is also under the logging tab over here on the, the right hand side. Right here under logging is where we can further define exactly the types of events that we want to actually make their way into the log. And again, these are the remote access type events as opposed to the NPS type events. So I can log errors, errors and warnings, all events or, or nothing. And I can also add in here the, the debug logs as well. I'd highly recommend not checking this box unless you absolutely have need to view those debug logs. They can be very large in size. 